I'm telling you, entrepreneurship is not rocket science. Is your product worth more than the price or is your product priced according to the value? Your product has to have some sort of story that raises the value. So when you say the price, it makes sense. Promotion, you have to tell somebody, you have to tell somebody about your product. 7.45 a.m. Catch me on the morning meetup hosted by David Shane's. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I Actually, today's message came from uh, the Social Proof Tour in New York. And I was on stage and I thought about it. I was like, wow, business really is only a couple parts. Does anybody know what those couple parts are? Like, if you think about it, just think about it. There's a few components to business, period. There's not a lot. For my, for my family that was in New York, can y'all share with them? It's only three components, really. Were you guys there? Think, plan, do? Not quite. Systems, little more than that. If you didn't hear me talk about it, then it's probably impossible for you to guess it. But these are really, really good answers. Sales operations, little more simplistic. Sales value products, have a product, sell it. It's very, yeah, come on, very simple, very simple. You guys are getting there. Product, price, selling. Yes. Okay. Let's get into this. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me do this. Let me do something real quick. Right fast. One time for the one time. Take that off. Let's go here. Okay. All right. Price, product, promotion. Yes. Case you was in the building. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's only a few components to a business. Okay. And, and tell me if I'm lying. Product, you have to have a product, and the service could be a product, right? Whatever the product is. Someone says, well, I don't have a product. I'm a motivational speaker. Well, your ability to go up and deliver a message is your product. So you must have a product. What else? We have to be able to put a price on that product. Am I right? I'm telling you, entrepreneurship is not rocket science. It's only a few things you got to figure out. And a lot of you are going to be missing one, two, or all of these. You must have a product. You must have a price for your product. And then you must promote your product. Price or product, price, and promotion. Am I missing anything in a business? Am I missing anything? The core components? Anything that you post that I'm missing will probably be a derivative of one of these three core components. Yes? No? Sale. Yes. That is taking the product as the product of taking the, the process of taking the product that has a price and telling somebody about it. Support. What do you mean by support, Josie? Do you think you need support for a successful business? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think you need support. Support team. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Core. Now, your support team or your team will probably be a derivative to, uh, to support these three elements. Consistency. That's going to come off of one of these. So let me get through the presentation or my conversation. And you guys tell me if these are the three core things you need to a business. One is the product. We've got to design what we're selling and who it's for. Somebody put your product in the chat real quickly. Put your product in the chat. What is your product? What is the thing that you sell? 
Throw it in the chat. What is your product? When I first started, when I when I first started in the thing that first helped me become successful or successfully leave my job was my t-shirts. I had a t-shirt company and that was my product. It was easy math for me. If I'm selling a t-shirt for $20, it's 20 bucks back then. If I'm selling a product for, if I'm selling a t-shirt for $20, if I want to make $100, I just got to sell five shirts. It was very, very simple for me to create the product. I mean, it wasn't just simple finding the t-shirt manufacturer and the printer and all that kind of stuff, but I knew that I needed to, there was only a few components to this particular product. It was a t-shirt, a design on the t-shirt. Now, if I could figure out how to find where t-shirts are, I just need some money. So I took some money for my job and I bought some blank t-shirts. And then I went to the print shop. You should have seen this presentation that I gave. I told the print shop, hey, who's your largest client? And they told me, and I said, well, how many shirts are they printing? And they told me, and I said, well, right now I'm going to print some shirts with you, but I just want to make sure that when I get an order of 10,000, you can handle it. And I'm sitting there across from the table in true interview fashion. I'm interviewing this print shop who has already have tons of clients. This is my very first order, but I'm telling you, appreciate that, Marion, okay, appreciate that. This is a fire episode actually. I'm sitting across, you should have seen my face as if I was the CEO of a big corporation. And I said, well, I'll have tens of thousands of shirts that I'm going to be ordering from you. And I want to make sure you can handle it. Now, what's crazy is, and no lie, I cannot make this stuff up. When I dropped the shirts off, I remember it vividly. I was coming from work. I got off work early so that I could go to the print shop. Now, in those days, I'm working at the Cheesecake Factory. And in those days, the servers had to wear all white. Like we wore all white, white pants, white shirt, white apron, and then whatever cool tie we'd like to wear. I'm sitting there with arrogance on a 20 in my Cheesecake Factory uniform, about to print up 72 t-shirts, and I'm interviewing them to make sure that they can do 10,000 shirts someday. I was confident. <laughs> I have my confidence was on 10. But I knew, I knew in my head, if I had a product, I'd be able to make money. Some of us are having a really hard challenge creating a product, or we have a product, but it's confusing. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions and give you uh, some help. Ty has cards. We have the cards, we have the product. It's an amazing product. Some of us will have a good product, we'll not put a price on it, but let me stick to this product part real quick, okay? We've got to identify who it's for, but not even who it's for. Let's go a little bit deeper. Who absolutely needs your product? Needs, not wants. Question for the chat. Did someone need a $20 t-shirt? Was that a need or a want t-shirt with a cool design on it? It's a want, it's a want, it's a want. It's a want to you. In my mind, this is something that someone needed. They needed it. You think it's a want, but there are some people that are so depressed. There are some people who have a special gift inside of them. And they have no daily reminders of who they are. So I put this sleepers for suckers on a t-shirt. And in my mind, 
if you don't wear this t-shirt or if you don't adopt this ideology of sleep is for suckers, you will be a failure for the rest of your life. Why? Because you're going to bed at eight o'clock and you're sleeping a full eight hours and you don't understand the concept of giving up sleep to get what you want. You don't get it. But if you were to adopt this, this is a very, this t-shirt is a very, very important part of your success because you will go become successful because you adopt the philosophy of the sleep is for suckers mindset, not just a cool t-shirt that goes with your sneakers. I'm talking about this t-shirt is the beginning of generational wealth for you. It's a need. The difference between uh, me and other entrepreneurs is that you feel like your product is something that people want or would like, or it's a convenience instead of a need. If we go a bit deeper into this product story, you will probably make more money. My, my man Mariano has the, uh, has the dance program and some people might look at it as an option for children. Oh, if you wanna dance, I'll teach you how to dance. A school might say, hey, we wanna offer dance to our children. Cool, that would be nice. That would be an elective. But if we truly believe in this product and we understand how it's going to save the lives of children, they're either going to be in here dancing or they're going to be in the streets fighting. This, this dance program is a life or death situation. When I'm, when I'm talking about people that need the podcast, it's not a convenience. That's why I stand firm on the fact that everyone needs a podcast. Not, not everybody wants a podcast. Whether you want it or not, you need it. Do you wanna be a better communication, uh, a better communicator? You need a podcast. You have no options or opportunities to communicate a message every single week on the same topic. This is why you need a podcast. There's so much inside of you. And because, because it's so much inside of you and it never comes out, it becomes hardened inside and it becomes increasingly difficult to get it out. And you feel like you wonder why you're stressed out. You wonder why you're depressed. You wonder why you're going through mental anguish and health issues. Why? Because there is a message that's becoming hardened in your heart, in your body, in your soul. And once you start to release it, you need a podcast. This isn't a want. So if we can like if we can start to make this product mean something. This is one of the components of a successful business. Identify who needs it. What is the need in the marketplace, not the want of the marketplace? Another part in your product. Does it work? Does it work? You cannot build a successful business around a product that doesn't work. And sometimes you're gonna to have to teach people how to properly use your product. You have to make sure it works. Okay. We have, um, let's say a mobile bartender. Is there a need? Of course, there's a need in your mind. There better be. But does it work? Are you good at it? The mixes that you make, do they work? Do people taste the mocktails and fall in love and say, ooh, wait, this tastes like I got head in it. Oh, my, are you getting the reaction? Focus on testimonials of the product. Focus on testimonials of the product. Because we have to make sure it works. You can build a successful business if it works. Next one product, is it packaged for easy reception? Is it packaged for easy reception? Now, I have a product and there's a price to it, but it's not, it's not packaged for easy reception right now. So I do do 
I do consulting and coaching sessions sometimes. But that part of my business isn't growing primarily because I don't, it's, it's not like a focus, but there's a good example. It's not packaged so it is easy to take. So for instance, I told you guys that we have, you could be on the social group podcast, right? And it could be like a coaching session or a Q&A or like you're telling the world kind of about your business. But some of you want to do it, but it's not packaged for easy reception. So it's not easy for you to take advantage of it because it's not, I don't have a formal process for it. Got it? Some of it's by design. It's just, I don't, I don't want to spend that much time and attention on that. But this is an example of it not being easy. I use this, this example in New York. Some of you are selling water but the water isn't in a bottle. Have you ever bought water that wasn't in a bottle? Have you ever paid some, for some water that was like, it wasn't, it wasn't in a bottle to take it. You just, you just take it in your hands. No? So we show, the, this, this shows the importance of the packaging of the product making it easy for me to hand you a bottle of water or a carton of water. Does this make sense? Some of us have the product. We got a, we got a, a pool of water product. It's amazing. And we're expecting people to come to this pool and like sip out of the pools. Like we need to package it. So it's easy for us to give it to someone, easy for them to receive it. So some of us need to package our product in an easily receptive way. Your coaching, is it hard to accept? Somebody's like, all right, yeah, I could do coaching for you. Just call me or email me. And then you have a conversation and the person may decide, yeah, okay, I'll take the coaching. And you're sending them like an invoice or you're sending, like you don't know, like it's not a, it's not a price really. It's like gonna be, based on the situation and what I'm gonna offer because I don't have the same offering for everyone. And if you want to grow a business successful, you need to grow the offering for everyone. I would rather you box yourself into a product, meaning these are the things that I offer and this is how you're going to receive them versus I'm offering different things for different people because it makes it increasingly difficult to package the product. It, it makes it difficult for them to receive it because there's too many conversations and questions around it. You can't really send them a link. Okay. So if you are, if I mention some things about your product that's lacking, just put a one in the chat real quick. Put a one in the chat real quick. If, if your product needs more attention. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right. This month, we focus on this, the product. Let's just make it easy for people to buy it. A process. Think about where your product is and where the customer is. Is there a streamlined process to get it to them? Easily, simplistically, can I offer this to 10 people in a day, 20 people in a day? No problem. I have an ebook. Go to the website, buy the ebook. No problem. Got it? It's packaged. Podcast Summit. Hopefully, you guys got your ticket. We have a date, a time, and a place. Go to the website, buy your ticket. Clearly outline what you get. Buy your ticket. It's easy delivery. Easy for you to buy it. That's the first part. Number two. The price, we have to put a price. Okay, great. Real quick, commercial break. Who will be at Podcast Summit 2023? Uh, who's going to be there? Uh, put a two in the chat if you have no idea what I'm talking about. You don't know what Podcast Summit is, and you just, you just don't know. Put a two in the chat if you have no idea what Podcast Summit is. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm doing my job. Okay. All right, great. This is amazing. I'll share this with you kind of on my third point, but I've 
made a dedication to go live every day, except for Saturdays, because I'll get out of work, I'll get out of church till late. But I'm gonna go live every day promoting podcast summit. But let me get into the next point. Price. You are going to have to price your product appropriately. After you have the product, there should be a price that people can pay for your product. Simplistically. I had a house, a house cleaner one time, and I thought this was dope because they had it packaged and priced appropriately, easy for me to understand. They said, if you have a one-bedroom house, this is the price. If you have a two-bedroom house, this is the price. Three-bedroom, price. Four-bedroom, price. Five-bedroom, price. And it made sense. I was like, oh, I got one, two, three, four. I got five bedrooms, easy price, paid the money, they came. And the price made sense because it was like more with each room, but it wasn't like the formula they had, it just made sense to me. They priced it appropriately. Is your pricing clear? Is your pricing clear? Sometimes our pricing is confusing for us. Commercial break. For those that don't know what Podcast Summit is, it is the premier content creation conference of the year. We are focused on podcasting. However, podcasting is simply a long form way, an easier way for you to create content. So we have multiple workshops for people who don't have a podcast, people who do have a podcast, and people who want to scale their podcast. We're focused heavily on monetization how you can make money as a content creator or podcaster. Everyone needs a podcast. Quick little commercial break. Back to the price. Is the product worth more than the price? Do me a favor, throw it in the chat. Is your product worth more than the price? Or is your product priced according to the value? Sorry, guys. Are there still room available? Yes. Is your product worth more than the price or is your product priced according to the value? Okay. And the question is, are we sure? The only way we can be sure if people are happily paying, the price is not an issue. Your price should be significantly less than the value. I'm going to confuse you for a second, then I will make it make sense, okay? Your price should be significantly less than the value. I'm going to confuse you for a second and hope I get you not to agree with me in the chat. And then I'm going to explain it. And then you have to double back and say, oh, okay, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I don't be sick a lot. My nose just be running. I just be stuffy in the mornings. <laughs> okay, great. I'm confusing people. This is awesome. So no one is going to pay $10 for a product that's worth $10. Meaning, people want to feel like they got a deal. So I paid $55,000 for a coaching program, not because the coaching was worth $55,000, because if I paid $55,000 and what I got from it was me making $55,000, I'm not going to do that. I paid $55,000 because that is a representation of what this thing was going to make me in terms of millions. So would I pay 55,000 to make millions? Of course. Would I pay 55,000 to make 55,000? No, it's a waste of time. My t-shirt was $20. Would someone pay $20 for a t-shirt? Of course not. But the value of people stopping and staring and saying, oh, you're an entrepreneur. That, listen, I was telling people 
that if you spend twenty dollars on this this product and people see you as an entrepreneur, they'll clearly identify you as an entrepreneur because some of the shirts said entrepreneur. And if you can create create a conversation with someone and they know that you have a product to sell, I can almost guarantee. I'll use I'll use the word almost. I can almost guarantee if you have a hundred dollar product, this shirt alone will reap you a client. Meaning this T-shirt is worth more than the 20. Okay. That's why we tell the story. That's why we tell the story of the need when we're talking about the product. Because once we put a price on it, it's no comparison. It's no comparison. So we were uh, we were in New York and, that, and I'm, I, I love using this example. And if you're here, you got to... Uh, Throw it in the chat because I forgot your name, but I'll never forget your story. She was talking about how she tutors kids in math. Now, would you get a tutor to tutor your kids in math for $650 a month? Yes, Lexus. Yes, absolutely. My dog. Would you, throw it in the chat real quick. Would you paying $650 a month for a person to tutor your child in math. Maybe, maybe not. If you have it, it's a high possibility that you don't value it. You value the 650 more than you value the tutor for the child. If you have it, if you have it. But if we can closely relate a child's ability to understand math to their likelihood of living paycheck to paycheck and mismanaging their money and squandering all their fortune and struggling for the rest of their life simply because they cannot calculate what they bring in versus what they spend. This creates a lifelong cycle. This is why mom, dad, you are struggling financially because you didn't have a tutor in math. And you cannot calculate the importance of the numbers when it comes to finances. And you will forever struggle if you don't get a math tutor. And, get, and when we get adults, we don't call it a math tutor. We call it a financial advisor. We call it someone teaching financial literacy. But as a child, we don't have to teach financial literacy. Sometimes it just starts with understanding math. Now. If this child truly understands math and starts to grow a fortune, do you realize the second half of your life you won't have to work because they're going to take care of you? Why? Because they understand math. So now, I'll teach your kid math for six hundred fifty dollars a month. That's one thing, but I can teach them how to become wealthy by understanding math. Now the six fifty seems so much smaller, doesn't it? Your product has to, has, has to have some sort of story that raises the value. So when you say the price, it makes sense. I got it? If you got it, say, I got it. If you got it, say, I got it. I just want to know that you got it. Okay? The product has to be worth more than the price. But even when you talk about the product, you have to know in your heart that this is worth way more than the price because people can tell that when you throw out a number, you don't believe it. Or you're afraid of the number that you're sharing. We can feel it. I can feel that this is negotiable. In terms of pricing, search your industry. Search your industry. What is everybody else charging? Now, I'm not telling you to charge what everybody else is charging. You might charge significantly cheaper. Frank Lucas did it. Killed the game. Frank Lucas. He was like, oh, that's what y'all charging? I'm going low. Let's go. Well, you might charge significantly more. And I'm not telling you one's good and one's bad. But I'm saying find out what's going on in the market. What are people paying for? There are some, listen. I don't know who the first who the first luxury designer was. I don't know. But there had to be a first where everybody's charging 
three dollars for a garment back in the day, and they're like, "Yo, same garment, better material, I'm charging thirty. At a point, thirty dollars is probably high fashion price. Okay, so I think I was talking about like searching your industry. Look, look in your particular industry and find out what other people are charging higher, lower, same price or whatever. That just gives you some education on what people are charging and for what price, okay? And lastly, don't be ashamed of the price. Don't be ashamed. Say it with your chest. This is how much I charge because what I'm charging is way less than the value, okay? Last thing, promotion. Promotion. You got to tell somebody daily. Yeah, it was like, oh, welcome to Brooklyn. Yeah, I was like, dang, why, why rappers don't? It seems like such a thing that rappers in New York would talk about. Like, this is like, you, I ain't heard no no bars about it. And it was like, yeah, they ain't really going. <laughs> they ain't going to talk about it too much. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> don't nobody want that smoke, my boy. That's what's up. Yeah, I, I would do more research because it's, it's very interesting. Anyway, promotion. You have to tell somebody, you have to tell somebody about your product. You have to tell somebody. How many people are struggling telling somebody? You got to tell people. You understand you have to tell, if you have a product and there's a price, you have to tell people to buy the product at that price. You have to. One of the exercises that I want you to do for today is to ask people to buy your product. Now, somebody mentioned systems earlier. Let's say a product, right? Or somebody mentioned a team. You don't need a team for any of these, right? But if you are lacking in coming up with a product, then maybe you should hire somebody to help you craft and create the product. No problem. They don't have to be a part of your team. It could be just an expense. Or for the promotion. You don't need a team to tell anybody, but if you're struggling, Maybe you could have someone build a funnel or some sort of email campaign where you just have to promote people to go to this website or text this number. You get the person's information. And once their information is in the system, the system does the promotion for you on a regular basis with emails, texts, all that kind of stuff. You understand? You have to tell people daily, though, every day. Do me a favor. I want you to tell people every day to buy your product. Ask five people a day to buy your product. You'll make significantly more money. Also, be creative in your approach. I don't know how you're going to be creative in this approach. I had an idea, though, for the podcast summit. I asked my man, Lonnie. I said, Lonnie, I want to promote the podcast summit, but you do skits. So Lonnie does skits. And I said, can you do a skit for podcasters promoting the summit? He said, hmm, I don't know. I think so. It would be really, really cool. So we're going to do skits to promote. This is our creative approach at telling people what it is that we do. Be creative. The objective is to tell people and let the world know this is what you do. Again, I'm, I'm making this commitment to go live every single day to invite people to the podcast summit because I'm not naive enough to think that every, look, I'm in this morning meetup every single day. There were some people this morning that said, I have no idea what podcast summit is. And that's cool. That means I need to continue to talk about it. That's why. Do me a favor, take a sales class or a course on sales for promotion. I think that would be valuable for you. Take a sales class. You need to be educated on how to tell people how to promote, how to sell. I really, really want to double back. And y'all gotta ask Brent, but I want to double back on how to win friends and influence people at some point. That is a, such a good book because it teaches you about people. Sales is not about the transaction. It's about a human behavior psychology. It's about humans and how they interact and what makes them tick and what makes them buy. What makes them take money out of their pocket and give it to you? Okay. Social media isn't the marketplace in terms of promotion. 
Social media isn't the place people buy and sell. Social media is a tool that will lead them into you asking them for a sale. So I'm doing lives on social media, right? But that's not where the playing ground is. This is just promotion. It's not like I go live and you give me money. I go live to explain what it is that's going on. Then you got to go to the website. I, my goal is to get you to the website to make the transaction. You can go in the streets. Can we still become ambassadors? Yes, David. You should have gotten some emails. And uh, if you email some stuff over the weekend, I'm sure they'll get back over. Uh, Kay will get back to you today. Social media isn't the marketplace. Social media is a place where people that will buy from you are, but you got to get them over there, right? So my page, I want to make sure that there's value on my page. Not that my page sells people, but my page supports all of my other efforts of asking people for money, okay? And we got to do it online and offline. Listen, we are recording this Wednesday. Just a heads up. I don't think we ever gave you two days in advance. And Cynthia gets on me all the time. So she got y'all back. I'm just janky. But we are recording this Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So if you are in the morning meetup, you can definitely pull up on us. Okay? These three I want you to consider. Your product, your price, and your promotion. One of these are lacking if you don't have a successful business. Once you get them all dialed in, I would suggest starting with the product, making sure you have a clear product that can be delivered, pricing it appropriately. And once you have those two together, most people fall off because they don't want to tell people about it or they get burnt out because you make a post and nobody buys off your post or you're not getting engagement. And then you feel bad about it. And then you just quit. You just stop at that point. So, um, one of these we're going to have to improve on or all of them. Listen, I love you. We have a very, very special week. We got two really, really powerful people Tuesday and Wednesday that are speaking uh, that are going to help you get to this money on social media, okay? Listen, I love you all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Brandon's going to make some announcements. If you're brand new, get the book. Um, your next five moves by Patrick. But David, Brent, thank you. It's on you. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.